So, well, hello, I'm Nikki Gutierrez. I am the your host for the last presentation, but not least presentation for Bruce Feingold. Unmute. I sent you the unmute, Bruce, so you can prepare for your stuff. Um, the, pre the title of his um, talk is The Healing Heart Readings from Arrhythmia. And I will give a short in, um, biography for Bruce um, Feingold. Bruce H. Feingold has been a psychologist for over 35 years in the Fran San Francisco Bay Area, California. He believes that haiku is an art of the heart which taps our intelligence, creativity, creativity, openness, and honesty. Bruce's haiku have been pub has been published worldwide and have won numerous awards, including the Haiku Canada Betty Dronoik Award, the Haiku Poets of Northern California Chime Award, and Haiku Poets of Northern California International Senryu Contest. His haiku has been chosen four times in the Red Moon Anthology of English Language Haiku. Bruce's four volumes of haiku, A New Moon, Sunrise on the Lodge, Old Enough, and Arrhythmia, are published by Red Moon Press. Bruce's haiku reflect his work as a practicing psychotherapist and love of family, travel, forests, mountains, ocean, yoga, and Buddhism. He is on the board of directors of the Haiku Foundation and chairs the Touchstone Awards. Bruce is vice president of the Haiku Poets of Northern California and resides in Berkeley, California with his wife. And I will give it away to Bruce. You ready, Bruce? I'm gonna share screen and see if this works. Well, cool, and I will go in the background. There we go. Uh, my name is Bruce Feingold, as Nikki said, and I'm zooming to you from Berkeley, California. And I'm going to read today from the Healing Heart, uh, the presentation is The Healing Heart, readings from Arrhythmia. You can contact me by email or Instagram. I recently wrote Old Pond, We Share Haiku via Zoom. I was fortunate to visit Kyoto several years ago, and I imagined Basho strolling with fellow poets and sharing haiku as they walked around the gardens and temples. At this moment of a global pandemic and social upheaval, I hope this reading, last reading of the day, may be an offering of respite and hope. Um, I'm honored, honored to read from my newest collection, Arrhythmia, which was published several, moons, several months ago by Red Moon Press. I want to thank Jim Cajun for his early input about the rhythm of the poems, and to thank Randy Brooks and Chuck Brigley, Brickley, whose keen, keen sense of haiku and the flow were instrumental. Here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to read from Arrhythmia, and I'm going to blend it with a personal narrative and photos. I'm wearing two hats today. One is a psychologist, one is a haiku poet. I'm going to try to parallel similarities between the creative process and the therapeutic process of dealing with grief and healing. I'm going to read about 35 minutes and I'm going to read often in full screen. I hope I can toggle between, but I'll go between the photos, some poems, and the full screen. So bear with me in terms of the toggling back and forth. And I'm hoping the last 15 minutes, you can comment on the reading, and of course, share a haiku related to illness and recovery. Uh, please remember the talk is being recorded, and of course, your participation is optional. Ralph Waldo Emerson, do not follow where the path may lead, Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Arrhythmia is dedicated to my wife, Maddie. Let's see. Can you see me okay now? 
Section one, Dead Woman's Pass. Milky Way, the last years of my life, the beginning of his. Milky Way, the last years of my life, the beginning of his. Dead woman's pass. My son doubles back to check on me. Dead woman's pass. My son doubles back to check on me. Highest I'll ever be, the sky unfolds into clouds and peaks. Highest I'll ever be, the sky unfolds into clouds and peaks. Altitude sickness, alone in my tent, dreaming of home. Altitude sickness, alone in my tent, dreaming of home. On the Inca Trail, there are 70,000 limestone and granite steps, which become treacherously steep as you climb to the Holy Sun Gate. With the first views of Machu Picchu, my son scaled them easily and my humble ascent is memorialized on his iPhone. The humbling effects of aging are classical haiku topics, which is sometimes sprinkled with groomy or non-attachment lightness. And acknowledging vulnerabilities is a foundation of mental health. And in therapy like haiku, when you describe an experience and you say, this is me, this is what I'm feeling. Or in haiku aesthetics, we talk about suchness, you're more aware and you're in a haiku moment. Crawling on my hands and knees to the sun gate. Machu Picchu. The grit of his stubble, bristlecone pines. The grit of his stubble, bristlecone pines. Cusco, golden plunder adorns the altar of Christ. Cusco, golden plunder adorns the altar of Christ. Andean dusk. The dancer shadows spread across the plaza. Andean dusk, the dancer shadows spread across the plaza. Back home, the mountain quiet in my poems. Back home, the mountain quiet in my poems. Zen garden, each rock a breath. In graduate school, I read Martin Buber, and he taught about two states of being, being open or being closed. And as we age, we may either become closed or become curmudgeons, or we may become more open, adaptable, and wise. Psychotherapy and meditation are practices which create inner space. In haiku, we value poems which are expansive, multi-level, and resonate, resonate at the deepest well. Zen garden, each rock a breath. Summer stillness, the fog rolls in, the fog rolls out. Summer stillness, the fog rolls in, the fog rolls out. Uh, the next poem emerged spontaneously after dreaming of my basketball youth of warming the bench. There are several dream haiku in arrhythmia. Freud said that dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. And when we access our unconscious in haiku today, 
as we've talked a lot about the whole conference today, we perceive the non-rational connections or the juxtapositions of images that don't necessarily fit together in the real world, the rational world, to create a new whole. Same dream, I watch the game from the bench. Same dream, I watch the game from the bench. Section two, insomnia. A call out to John Stevenson's Haiku Dark, which lost the name of one of his volumes the last couple of years, which inspired this form. Freud taught us to live well, had to sue Biden and sue Lieben, to work and to love. I've been a psychologist for actually nearly 45 years. And the burden of being good enough, successful enough, has become, if anything, more intense. I'm sure you've heard your own inner critic. I hate what I'm writing today. I hate this haiku. I'm tired of getting rejected from Frog Pond. Negative judgments are antithetical to creativity, but pay playfulness is a powerful antidote. Failings. Failings. Dog days of August, my patient's childhood strikeouts. You'll see in the background there are bobbleheads and signed baseballs. We're a baseball family here. Dog days of August, my patient's childhood strikeouts. Country road through autumn fields bursting with refugees. Country road through autumn fields bursting with refugees. You'll notice a political dimension in my poems. In Buddhism, personal awakening strives towards empathy, compassion, and benefit for all human beings. And in therapy, we've come around to realize the unity of our personal life, our social life, cultural life, and political selves. I'm mindful of something that uh, Paul Miller uh, said about the danger of proselytizing haiku, and I think Michael Rayling in his earlier discussion, talked about the subtlety of political haiku, so to speak. Um, and if they're too strong, they can smash us over the head and lose their power. But when we compose political haiku that work, we're part of our culture trying to heal ourselves. Country road through autumn fields bursting with refugees. Doric columns. The perfect balance of a wished for self. Doric columns, the perfect balance of a wished for self. Interval training. I practice my rebuttals to Donald Trump. Interval training. I practice my rebuttals to Donald Trump. Successful. You know, I know a lot of haiku poets have mixed opinions about wordplay senaru. For me, they're spontaneous, uh, they're delightful, they're fun. And in haiku and therapy, we listen for moments when we break out of our rational constraints and we play and we have fun and we feel lighter. Successful. Insomnia. I keep waking up in 1930s Germany. Insomnia. I keep waking up in 1930s Germany. The flying crows from Van Gogh's madness, dark blue autumn. The flying crows from Van Gogh's madness, dark blue autumn. Post-election, how are you, now begins with but. Uh, for those in the U.S., for those internationally, uh, who people were horrified at the 2016 election. When someone would say, how are you? People would often say, well, I'm doing well, but. Post-election, how are you now begins with but. Arrhythmia, the unraveling of the republic. Arrhythmia, the unraveling of the republic. Section three the rise and fall. 
sudden death, an angel cradles my heart with its wings. Sudden death, an angel cradles my heart with its wings. Sweet Hala, the rabbi blesses his sons. My father was a rabbi and Friday night he would bless us and Hala is the bread of Shabbat. Sweet Hala, the rabbi blesses his sons. Wild Iris, the night in a tent with Eve. Wild Iris, the night in a tent with Eve. Each morning I receive the Dictionary of the Word in my email. One day Rampike came up. And Rampike is a Canadian word for the white skeleton of dead trees fell by lightning. Rampike, medicine restarts my heart. This is from up in the high country of Yosemite in Granite Country. Rampike, medicine restarts my heart. Everyone gone, the rise and fall of an EKG. Everyone gone, the rise and fall of an EKG. The way a nurse placed the thermometer, my mom. The way a nurse placed the thermometer, my mom. Whiteboard, the doctor's quick sketch of an aorta. Whiteboard, the doctor's quick sketch of an aorta. Gurney, I practice my Catskill routine. Gurney, I practice my Catskill routine. Angioplasty, my daughter-in-law texts emoji hearts. You know, Jung taught us about the value and power of symbols and images, while Freud talked about the verbal use of verbalization. And emojis, of course, are imagistic, and it's a perfect match for our trade. Angioplasty, my daughter-in-law texts emoji hearts. Don's first light, yellow chrysanthemum in a vase. Don's first light, yellow chrysanthemum in a vase. Anesthesia, the last leaf, let's go. Anesthesia, the last leaf, let's go. A new mountain trail in my chest defibrillator. A new mountain trail in my chest defibrillator. Uh, nearly four years later, when I look in the mirror and I see I have this defibrillator, which is nearly the size of a baseball but bulging out of my chest, I still can't believe it. That's the shock of trauma. And many mornings I look at my wife and I say, I have defibrillator and my wife rejoins, how did that happen? When traumatic events overwhelm us, we feel shock and disbelief. But when we tell our story in therapy, express our feelings, our thoughts, and when we write, write personal grounded haiku, we face our lives with honesty and truth, and that's therapeutic. There's a little haiku irony here I've never shared, actually. I first noticed the shortness of breath and dizziness more acutely when several of us from the haiku poets of Northern California were assisting David Grayson preparing the HSA anthology for mailing. You know, I've backpacked, I've been a runner, I ran a marathon, I've scrambled up peaks throughout the world that I never had been dizzy or short of breath, anything like this. My primary doctor missed the significance and I was starting to have heart palpitations only during the, in the middle of the night and they were beginning to keep me awake. I wasn't sleeping anyway because of the election results. And at 3 a.m., I Googled my symptoms and diagnosed I was having an arrhythmia. Through a serendipitous series of events and support and encouragement from my wife, I saw a cardiologist that day, and out of caution, we, I checked myself into the emergency room in late evening. Within an hour, the symptoms had escalated where my heart was bouncing between several hundred beats a minute to very few. I was shaking uncontrollably and flying off the table. 
my wife and I had no idea why I had paddles on me because I was conscious and I was talking. And uh, we were, why so many doctors were, were hovering around and nurses. And I joked to my wife, I was a yogi levitating. Section four vertebrae. Winter sunset, cutting off the hospital band. Winter sunset, cutting off the hospital band. Uh, this is from the Central Valley, the Thule fog and geese rising in sunset. Arctic winds, friends toast to health and freedom. Arctic wind, friends toast to health and freedom. Dark attic, our cold feet touch under the quilt. Dark attic, our cold feet touch under the quilt. Christmas, the homeless man still nameless. Christmas, the homeless man still nameless. Winter dusk, the shadows thrown by whale vertebrae. Winter dusk, the shadows thrown by whale vertebrae. New Year's morning river tide rushing towards the sea. New Year's morning river tide rushing towards the sea. Orion's belt, the globe spins me again. Orion's belt, the globe spins me again. Waning crescent moon, dad's pill cutter now mine. Waning crescent moon, dad's pill cutter now mine. Downpour, I walk under an umbrella with my defibrillator. Uh, this poem was chosen by Sherry Hunter Day from Mariposa. Sherry's always inspired me. Hope, perhaps she's inspired others to stretch our boundaries. When I wrote this haiku, I was in a winter grieving process and it poured out of me as quickly as the rain. Some poems are therapeutic like this, cathartic, cleansing, part of letting go. I also like this poem for another reason, it's a theoretical reason. I didn't consciously intend this, but I believe the haiku used juxtaposition and disjunction. It juxtaposes the unpredictability of nature, how we shield ourselves with an umbrella, ways we cope to protect ourselves. But the imaginably, the last line is disjunctive. I never could have imagined having a device in my chest which will shock me back to life. And I've been a therapist a long time, and what I know is that our lives are disjunctive. Downpour, I walk under an umbrella with my defibrillator. I attended college at UC Santa Cruz in Northern California. It's nestled in a towering redwood forest. And I've always wanted to write a good redwood haiku. But no matter how many times I tried, it never happened. I had redwood haiku writer's block. As I walked through the redwoods that winter, I became one with the beauty and the power of decay and change. And this haiku went through several edits. We talked about editing today during the conference and to arrive at what I felt expressed and experienced as Savi. And this is true in grief too. We turn over our thoughts over and over again. We get stuck, we get bereft, maybe angry until we discover some perspective, some acceptance. Fallen redwoods, the solitary walks after illness. Mount Everest, dreaming of the peaks I'll never climb. This is the Mount Everest, is in the center of the screen of the photo. That's me, a younger version. And you'll see that the Mount Everest is the tallest mountain of a huge crest of mountains that rise over 25, 26,000 feet. Mount Everest, dreaming of the peaks I'll never climb. The last section, open sky. Let me screen share again. Cherry blossoms. I listen. 
to my pulse for arrhythmias. Cherry blossoms, I listen to my pulse for arrhythmias. Healing is organic, it's natural. If you let your ego, you get out of the way, healing happens for us. Uh, when you feel angry or bereft or stuck, and when you feel you can't sink any lower, something really clicks, something opens up. Emerald Hills, how little rain it takes for hope to grow. These are the East Bay Hills around the Bay Area. We're dry and brown all summer till the rains come and then they green up. Emerald Hills, how little rain it takes for hope to grow. A swallowtail brushes my fingertips, warrior pose. Swallowtail brushes my fingertips, warrior pose. Trump neighbor, we discuss the migration of sparrows. Trump neighbor, we discuss the migration of sparrows. The scar slowly healing wildflowers. The scar slowly healing wildflowers. During the 1991 Oakland's fire, my wife and her two young children, we were evacuated by noon. And the next spring, poppies and lupins carpeted the hills. Today, as we shelter in place, I'm sure you've all noticed the air is cleaner, it's quieter. And the birds in my garden are more active and way less afraid. With a little breathing room, the earth renews itself. Therapy, likewise, is a quiet space to pause, reflect, and rejuvenate. And in haiku, we talk about ma, the unspoken, the empty space between words. Quote, ma is an emptiness full of possibilities like a promise yet to be fulfilled. The scar slowly healing wildflowers. Uh, the Dalai Lama says that enlightenment is very simple. We decrease the negative feelings and increase the positive ones. And it's often not enough in life and in therapy just to reduce our suffering, our negative feelings. We also often need to nurture our positive experience of love, joy, and wholeness. And Haiku, of course, has a venerable tradition of writing and describing oneness with the natural world. Buttercups at high noon, yellow squared. Buttercups at high noon, yellow squared. Talk of love. The trail swarms with ladybug. Talk of love. The trail swarms with ladybugs. My son was married in Brooklyn in a refurbished foundry less than a year after my heart incident. My wife and I knew and our friends, we knew we'd be happy, of course, but we were blown away by the boundless joy and love and gratitude. She straightens her brother's wedding tie, late summer rain. She straightens her brother's wedding tie, late summer rain. Staying alive, the groom's parents revive their disco moves. Staying alive, the groom's parents revive their disco moves. A solace to aging and death is passing the baton to the next generation. And in this situation, it's the barbecue brush. My son mans the barbecue grill, Labor Day. My son mans the barbecue grill, Labor Day. Late afternoon, napping to the sound of a ball game. Late afternoon, napping to the sound of a ball game. A selfie to text home, gas mask. Uh, this center room might be a little bit obscure. Uh, during the devastating fires in Northern California, 
while walking through UC Berkeley, I watch the students living through the reality of climate change, the new generation, the next generation. This is not an abstract idea. It's not in the future, it's happening now. And I think the Senru is kind of eerie given our new relationship with masks. A selfie to text home, gas mask. Border wall bones scattered around the saguaro. Border wall bones scattered around the saguaro. Bare root plum, the faith it takes to plant a tree. Bare root plum, the faith it takes to plant a tree. Trek to Everest, a year later, she's in love. Trek to Everest, a year later, she's in love. Lake breeze, the quietude of a defibrillator. This is all also High Sierras, near Tahoe, Lake Desolation Wilderness. Lake Breeze, the quietude of a defibrillator. Open sky, the quick strokes of a Merlin. Merlin is a type of small endangered hawk, falcon. Open sky, the quick strokes of a Merlin. After being lost and confused, when we rediscover our faith and hope and gratitude, the walk on the path ahead of us is often clear and simple. And as haiku poets, we use everyday and simple words often to convey our deepest human experiences to resonate and speak essential truths. Gentle decline, the trail meandering to where we began. Uh, this is a photo in the fall, clearly, from the philosopher's walk in Kyoto. Gentle decline, the trail meandering to where we began. Thank you. We can now open it up for questions and comments, share haiku, and you can contact me by email or Instagram, and uh, you can purchase books from me. If you're internationally based, uh, you can purchase them directly from Red Moon Press but you live in the US, you can contact me with my email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Um, like Bruce said, this is time now for questions and comments. Remember to message, message your comment or to me and I will um, call upon you and unmute you. Um, we got one in the chat from Kathabella Wilson. She loves your haiku and your context, context comments. The haiku are powerful in themselves. The comments and image are extra gifts. Am I on speaker, Nick? Yes, Nick? you are. Mm -hmm. So if anyone have haiku about uh, healing, recovery, themselves, others, they want to share, this is a time for people to do that. Um, we have another comment from Bruce in the chat in the, for everyone, um, from one Bruce to another. Thank you, Rabbi Bruce J. I cannot pronounce the last name, Perfer. Thank you for sharing your story as well. I'd be curious if people want to talk about their own sense of the therapeutic. I mean, we write poetry, we write poetry, but if people have experiences of where the therapeutic aspect for them, as well as the creative aspect. Okay. Um, Jay has a question and I shall um, unmute him so he can ask it. Hi, Jay, you are unmuted. Okay, it's 
shed some light on this situation. Uh, thank you, Bruce, very much for the wonderful reading. Um, I, you know, when I, I was thinking when you were presenting that oftentimes I will write poems that have this very sad or poignant or depressing nature to them. And, it's, and then I wonder, well, do people want to hear this stuff, right? Um, especially now because there's no shortage of pandemic poems. Um, but then, you know, of course you realize that poetry is about the full spectrum of human experience. And, um, you know, like poetry can't only be about butterflies and fluffy clouds, right? I mean, someone's got to be brave and step up and write about the, the, uh, the stuff that sometimes we don't want to have to face. Um, and, and um, you know, in the United States, we live in a society where death is something that we ignore. It's not like Mexico, where it's part of the culture and other countries. Um, and I think that's actually a, a sad, that's actually a sad thing in and of itself. So anyway, there's, there's a question here, which is, um, um, but how do you feel about, you know, writing sad poems and in comparison to writing poems that are more neutral or uh, hap, hap, or with happy mm. themes? Yeah. Well, I think it's hard to write really joyous poems that don't, aren't sentimental. Um, I think it's easier to write, not easier, but I think it'd be interesting to look at the different journals, but I think a lot of have uh, sobby poems, aloneness poems. Uh, there are a lot of grieving poems, illness poems. Um, I guess for me, it's personal. I write the whole spectrum. Uh, I'm two theoretical psychologists here, but I really, in my work and how I see myself and others, we're the whole person. So I think it's the whole dimension of who we are. And I think at different phases, we write and express different parts of ourselves. I encourage my own inner, my own poetic voice. I encourage my patients, my friends to talk about the spectrum of their experience. And that, you know, because we're, we're all parts of those things. We're all, that's all part of us. So I don't know if that addresses your yeah. question. Yeah, sometimes, and sometimes it's those sad poems that stand out the most in your mind that have the most emotional punch and that and that stay with you so yeah. even though we're not there, we, we might not want to face them those are the ones that that we that we we remember yeah well there's a saying in psychology that uh, you know negative events because we're always on fight or flight vigilance are more like velcro and positive events are more like teflon and that meditation really tries to address that, to listen to the gratitude, to listen to the thankful, listen to the positive. And I think when we read haiku that have great beauty um, and joy, hopefully they, we carry them with us as well as the, the poems of sadness or fear. Thank you. Um, next, we have a comment from Bruce J. Prefer, and I will um, unmute him. It, yeah, it's hard to pronounce it. It's Pfeffer, silent P. Pfeffer? Yeah. I am sorry. That's okay. I'm, I'm I butchered it at least three times. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you and everyone else, but you were kinder. You didn't call me Pfeiffer. But uh, I'm a rabbi, but I'm also a chaplain. And when I work with the other hospital chaplains, it's so important for us to be in the moment when we're with the patients and their families. And... So I don't use haiku so much with the patients, but with the chaplains, sometimes we practice writing. I try to teach them. And so thank you, Bruce, you know, in, in sharing your story. I really appreciate it. And I find haiku is really great for helping people focus on the moment. And I'm repeating myself now, so I'll stop. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce. Um, next we have Marilyn and I shall unmute them. Yes. Yes. Thank you, uh, Bruce, very much. I began writing haiku. Um, and, and I think that there's a connection with time. And you mentioned Ma, actually, uh, occurring, the silence occurring, you know, within haiku and other uh, forms that came from Japan. Uh, but I began writing haiku and then I moved to Tonka. And now I'm, I want to do both. Um, and your, 
your question about therapy, uh, you know, for those of us who are listening, uh, to have a deeper reality acknowledged, to be to to be placed uh, when I when I read haiku, I'm placed in a deeper reality, and when I write tonka and I hopefully haiku, I find that reality within myself. And this is extremely important. Um, I think especially now. And certainly I'm also aging uh, as well as I can. And I think that this finding, identifying this deeper reality is really important uh, in the aging process. Um, so I think that that's what... Uh, what I have to say. Thank you. I agree. And it's, it's beautifully put. And, and uh, both in therapy and in, in poetry and haiku, we distill, we crystallize that experience and, it's, and we feel it at the deepest level. And then we feel more alive, more awake. And from that becomes more acceptance that this is suchness, this is okay. This is how we're going through the world. And that's that's okay. No judgment, not attachment, but very connected. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I saw that Bruce Kennedy put a haiku in the chat of one of his. Um, I I'm going to extend a hand to Bruce if he would like to um, read it out loud. So if you would like to, Bruce, go ahead. Okay. Um, I can't see it right now, so I have to work off of memory. Uh, yeah, it's a friend of mine, or acquaintance, died of AIDS back in 92. And he was a naturalist, and he wrote essays about uh, watching the, the fungus grow on his skin because he was an amateur naturalist. So the haiku goes, if Robert were here, he'd know this mushroom growing on his grave. If Robert were here, he'd know this mushroom growing on his grave. You know, I find that very moving, very beautiful. If others want to comment, yeah. Um, next, we have a comment from Marietta Gar, and I'm going to unmute them. Am I am I good? Yes, you are good. good. So I have a very quick uh, senryu. Um, dedicated to some of my friends, I think. Dilemma. So many pasts to be stuck in. No comments? Would you read it again? I think that'd be sure. great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> D Please. Dilemma. So many pasts to be stuck in. I think that gets the paradox. <laughs> Yogi, there's a Yogi Berra saying, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, our next comment comes from Deborah P. Kologi. I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, but I am giving you... Um, yes, um, you pronounce the name correct, so don't worry about that. Kologi yeah. is correct. Um, I, I kind of want to go back to what you said, Bruce, about writing the spectrum of our experiences. I really feel that's important with haiku, that if we only write about um, one topic, um, you know, if, if we think that haiku is only about going down and go walk and walk and writing in the forest, or, you know, I, I just think that the wide variety of our experience really adds a depth to our collective haiku that we write. Um, and as far as therapy, you would ask that question. And I also um, find haiku very thorough. I think poetry in general can be therapeutic. I remember 
you know, when I got divorced, before I ever started writing haiku, I wrote all these poems about earthquakes, you know, you know um, which was therapeutic. And, and sometimes the therapy can be writing about the experience, like I was in the hospital last fall, and I wrote a whole series of hospital haiku, um, which I could read in one, but I don't know if I have time because there's a lot of people that want to read. Um, but, but also sometimes, like with the pandemic, you know, I find therapy in sitting in my garden and writing haiku about the birds that visit my backyard. So in that sense, I'm writing something positive, but it's also therapeutic. So I think writing about the negative feelings and also looking at the moment and just, okay, things look pretty bleak, but gosh, this is really pretty butterfly. I'm going to write about that. I think both of those are very therapeutic. And so I, I really think that Haiku helps me focus in on those individual moments in my life and helps me remember the ones I want to remember and it expresses the emotions, some of which, you know, some of those haiku may never see the light of day. But anyway, that's what I was thinking. And I think it's very relevant, uh, again, from the psychology hat for a second. We've been way more aware of helping people nur and nurture people's sense of gratitude because we do have a negative bias. We do all have issues, traumas, conflicts. And now globally, we've got a, a pandemic and climate change too, that's touching every human being. So being aware of what we're grateful for, what works is a way of uh, surviving and flourishing and getting in touch with the human spirit so that we can move forward. Yeah, thank you. And that can be as simple as, as a, a simple haiku of wonder uh, with your bird, uh, birds in your garden. Yeah. All right, next we have Soretta Martin. There you go. Okay, here I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I wrote several in the in the um, chat frame, but most of you probably have already read them. So I'll just read one of them f so that other people will have more time. Um, Debbie was mentioning what I was feeling about the fact that poetry is uh, a way for us to express our emotions, be it uh, memories or happiness. Um, loss, whatever it may be. And I'm not a happy person when I'm not writing because it's such an important um, outlet for me to, um, to express my creativity and to um, process what's going on in life. Um, so I'll just read one of these. Um, the other ones were childhood memories, but this one is a memory of a deaf person. Spring's early departure, the curve of his fingers, signing love. Read it again for the group, it's very beautiful. Spring's early departure, the curve of his fingers, signing love. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, our next person to comment is Adelaide B. Shaw. Well, I'm muted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, just, um, I'm a widow and, uh, it has been less than three years, so I still have moments of grief, but this is, this is one. Winter passing. Day by day, grief subsides. I just wanted to um, share that as, uh, you know, I write a lot about grief and um, nature helps me cope. So I, I understand the um, helpfulness of nature and um, aging as well. I'm 83 years old, so I know very well about, you know, slowing down, taking day by day, 
with the birds. That's just off the top of my head right now. <laughs> I just thank you for, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you to everyone today. I really enjoyed it. Although I've had trouble, I've posted comments and, and on, on the chat all day long, and this is the first time I've been recognized. So I appreciate that to have had a chance to um, say something. Thank you, everybody. Signing off, over and out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have another comment from Marilyn. I'm going to unmute them. There you go. Hi. Um, this, this might be too, too large, uh, but I was wondering if you could say something more about Ma and something about the value of noticing. It strikes me, it's, it, it's, yeah, it strikes me that what we notice says something about ourselves. And uh, we get to value that by writing about what we notice. You know, I think, I'll confess, sometimes as a poet, I think I'm way too direct and just lay it out there and maybe more senru in that way. Uh, and I think Ma is the unspoken, what was the almonds phrase, the wordless poem. So I think it's when there's that emptiness between words, there's that understated uh, aspect, but the, the metaphor of the, the iceberg, what's on top of Aiku and all below, I think that resonates deeply with our, uh, from a psychologist's point of view, we'll talk about our unconscious. I think that resonates and sits with us. And I think that's an important experience, uh, especially in today's world with so much stimulation, is that quietude, the emptiness, um, gives us room to listen to ourselves, listen to others, listen to what uh, the world is telling us. So I don't know if that is helpful, but those are some of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? There's a lot of people with a lot of uh, expertise out there who want to comment. That'd be great. I think that's it for right now. Unless I missed something. Someone asked on the feed, this is uh, from Cambodia or from Angkor Wat. It's the, one of the noble kings who began a movement of democracy uh, in the seventh or eighth century. Okay. <laughs> I just saw, I must have missed a haiku by Robert. I apologize, Robert. Um, let me unmute you so you can share it. There you go, Robert. Okay, thank you. Um, I am uh, someone who's survived six heart attacks, have been a therapist, counseling psychologist for over 40 years, and um, uh, poetry has helped me and given me really intense meaning as I learn how to reinvent myself yet again. Um, the haiku I have is before I was going in for an ablation, and it's called uh, Anesthesiologist, and that's the first line. Anesthe anesthesiologist, patient sleeps in silken sheets, spider wraps the fly. Uh, we're we're um, ablation buddies, Robert. That was the, third, <laughs> the second procedure that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to, a little bit. <laughs> I had to have two as well, and I've got all sorts of aftermarket parts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Do you want to say it again? It's in the feed, but so people can hear it, hear your voice. Anesthesiologist. Patient sleeps in silken sheets. Spider wraps the fly. 
it's dark, but sometimes we have to talk about dark things. It's real. It's real. And I think haiku, it, 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 and this is a very Zen point of view, it's not dark or light, it, it is. And that's <laughs> not attachment, the not part of experiencing without judgment. And, and uh, it is, those are the, the sad and fearful dimension of feelings and and you experience them and that is part of uh, the cycle of life well, and, I, and i struggle with what the Taoist said is the biggest impediment having children <laughs> practicing non-attachment becomes difficult sometimes yes. but thank you so much a nice presentation thank you Nikki, you there? Yep. Okay. Um, and like I said, I, I missed somebody else, but I don't think there's any more. Um, any more comments or anything like that? Uh, comment from Sarita. Let me mute her. Oh, I was just saying thank you, Bruce. This was so insightful and and full of thoughtful things to to consider when we're writing our haiku. And um, there's so much depth in it. I, re I appreciate how you brought your profession into your poetry. Well, it's part of you. But I'm also very appreciative that you're still here with us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Jennifer Thurman has a comment. And I unmuted them. Yeah, I was going to say that I didn't even know um, haiku was therapy. Um, my husband died suddenly of a heart attack. And the first thing that I could read at all was poetry. And it was one of Basho's um, that I put up on the wall, which I'd like to read, which is, Dear Antler, now branching at the joint. Farewell. Hmm. And so for years, that was seven years ago, um, I've been doing haiku. And uh, at the beginning, it was ones such as this. A thank you letter from the eye bank. Dark afternoon. And the most recent was um, new moon. My fertile time when I was young. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I think we have time for one more haiku to be shared, and Cathabella Wilson has a haiku to share. Uh, this is, can you hear me? Yes. It's a haiku that I wrote when um, my husband had to have uh, cancer process surgery. It went on for many weeks, and we spent uh, six weeks in the hospital together. We were, um, I stayed night and day, and we're very close. But when I walked into the, um, the place where all this would happen at the City of Hope, uh, I saw, uh, they had, of course, beautiful art, different things everywhere that is therapeutic also. And this one, the first thing I saw is that it had slipped down out of its frame. So I wrote on oncology unit, the picture slipping out of its frame. And I felt like a whole life was slipping. And, and this was an illustration. I didn't look for it, it was just right there. And I went in the lobby to the uh, woman who was taking care of people coming in and out. And I said, did you know that picture is uh, out of, coming out of its frame? She said, yes, it's been driving me, cr me crazy for a couple of years. And I told her I wrote the haiku. 
and it was published in Seashore's uh, Haiku Journal. And after it was published, I brought her the journal and, and showed it to her, and she really appreciated it. But all through that process, I would say haiku was absolutely indispensable to me. It's what kept me able to do it, and I'd write it in the middle of the night, all night in the, in the hospital room. It, I have so much from that experience. And it's, there are things that really touch us deeply, and we don't have them in usual life. But they're very tangible, very strong, very emotionally resonant. So to use them for our own well-being and others, I was able to even share that with her. Uh, it's just an example. Thank you. Oh, that's great. It's beautiful. And we, we notice those details, the small, quote-unquote, minor events or, or details that symbolize our experiences and yeah. resonate. That's, that's really, really touching. Yeah, thank you. Unfortunately, it is 7 o'clock, 7 